everyone welcome to another league, league basics video my name is Nathan and today I'm going to be showing you on why you need to ward and some warding techniques um, wards are the eyes of League of Legends they help you reveal the fog of war we're gonna go over that in a minute and they also help you be able to see the enemy team reveal certain spots on the map and like I said before they are your ultimate eyes of League they're gonna reveal everything you basically want to know. Um, one important key thing, though, is with warding comes with watching your mini map. Uh, the mini map is such a big tool in League that people forget that will save your life over and over. Um, one thing that I try to practice when I'm playing League is to look over at my mini map like every 10 to 15 seconds when I'm laning, maybe even uh, sometimes even earlier. Uh, just get in the habit of always glancing over. It will save your life, I promise you. And um, yeah, so let's get right into it and I'll show you some good places to ward and why you should ward and what you will forget is that your champion can also act as a ward that people don't realize. Because when you walk around, you notice that your champion unveils the fog of war. But if I leave the area that's not warded, I cannot see. So this would be the fog of war in action. Alright, so now this is an example of what a control ward does. A control ward, you can place it down, it's not invisible, but it still reveals the area of the fog of war. It takes four hits, and it unveils, uh, unreveals things like Teemo shrooms, Shaco jack-in-the-boxes, things that might be invisible, you can now see. Now it does not give vision of perma-stealth champions like Twitch, or people like um, Evelyn, who walk around in stealth. But uh, this is an example of warding the enemy jungle and being able to see. Now if an enemy were to walk by and attack the ward, it would take them four times to kill it, four hits. But it would also, um, they could kill it if they wanted to. So this is an example of a control ward and how it gives vision compared to the warding totem which is invisible, the control ward is not. Now this is an example of me putting down a warding totem and being able to see the area. So when my champion's in the area, obviously I can see because the fog of war is gone. But if I leave the area, the fog of war is going to be back. Well, let's say I place down a control ward. I leave the area, go back to my lane. Obviously, allow is usually top, but we're going to go to mid. Now I can still see the area, I can see the scuttle, and I can see the dragon. So this is just a good example of how you can use your ward to get vision to right. This is going to be an example of a good way to ward while you're laning top lane. One thing that drives me crazy is when people ward right here and right here. Because this is a really bad place to ward. These two places are not good. Now I'm going to show you what's a good way to ward. So one thing when you're playing top lane is you'll notice that a lot of people, the basic wards are right here and right here. But a good place to ward would be right here for the crowd camp, one in the back over here, and one over here. Because when the enemy jungler comes over, you're not going to have time a lot of times to react to an enemy jungler walking through the bush over here. And so by the time you do react, it might already be too late. But this just gives you an advantage on where to see the enemy jungler and how you can prepare for him coming up for ganks if he's going to gank you because if you're laning over here in top lane you're not gonna most likely gonna be paying attention to these two bushes right here so the good thing is when you look on your mini map where you're gonna see the enemy jungler are probably here here or here and that will give you an advantage to help your team as well also one thing I forgot to mention was that you can only have three warding totems up on the map at one time and you can only place one control ward on the map at one time. And you can only carry two control wards at a time. Right. Now this is going to be an example of warding mid lane and some of the places you can ward. So, like top lane, a lot of people like to ward these bushes on the side here. Horrible places to ward, don't do it. So one of the good ways to ward is to be this bush right here, which is going to be right in the middle of the river. It's going to help you get the enemy vision of uh, the enemy jungler trying to walk into the river and gank you. Another one is right here, because you're going to get good vision of him walking down this way. Also his Krug Camp, or Krug Camp, uh, Raptor Camp. Another warding, good warding spot 
is not here. Don't ward in this bush, but ward over here. In this path, you're going to get the blast cone. You're going to get this little path right here. You're also going to be able to see if he's coming down to the river. And then another one right here in this river bush. Those are some really good warding mid places that are perfect for warding and going to help you get vision on the end. This is going to be an example, the last example of warding bot lane when you're in bot lane. Um, if you're playing on the blue side of the map, do not ward here or here. Ward up here. So a good spot would be maybe right here behind this wall. And that's going to give you vision of, or maybe like right here, that's going to give you vision of blue and the Krug, or Grom, if you like to say Krugs. <laughs> And then another good place to ward is the wolf camp for right here, for if you're playing bot lane blue side. Um, another spot could also be in the river, in the middle of the river, like right here. That's going to give you vision of the path, that's going to give you vision of if the enemy jungler jumps over the blast cone, and that's also going to give you vision of the dragon pit.